So hi, welcome to another Coffee and Coatings video. Uh, we are joined by our friend and colleague, Case Den Hollander, over in the Netherlands. Case, how are you? Doing well, Rich, doing well. Hope you do as well. Yeah, doing very well. Uh, normally I'd start this as well. So what do we have in store for you today? But I think it looks pretty obvious. I think it's quite obvious indeed. Today so, we're going to talk about pressure pots. Excellent, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my glasses up. So. We, we talked a little bit about the last videos that we did. Uh, we, we want them to be more about tips and tricks and what you guys want to see out there. So some of the feedback was, OK, you talk about the paint, but what do we use to put it down? So Case is uh, very kindly going to show us some of the equipment. So Case, um, I think you've got up there like a what we call a gravity gun, something you might see in automotive or or on in general pro that we see. Um, yeah, so paint goes in the top right, and I think uh, you're going to correct me. I think it's five five hundred mil, something like that. That holds. This uh, particular one is five fifty. You can see yeah. that in a liter as well, but uh, then it becomes a bit too heavy for the large jobs. Yeah. So what you've got there is you've got a vessel of paint to the gun, but what you're going to talk about today, I think, is is pressure pots because we see yeah. a lot of different ways of setting them up, and and as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is a a, a a sort of a container, a vessel of paint that then is pressurized to send it to the gun and it comes in bigger sizes so you can do bigger shoots without replacing the product in the gun. OK, OK, that's the main difference, actually. Yeah, so actually, the, the, the container is much larger in order to hold the paint. They come in different uh, shapes and sizes. For the purpose of today, I've set two more up. These are uh, equal in amount of uh, product Products. that can, can, can hold in. And this okay. one's slightly bigger. They can even go up to 10, 15 meters. Yeah. But I'll set these two aside for uh, the purpose of today. But, but I guess those bigger ones sort of stay sat in, in one area with longer leads. What you can do with that one is, is put it under your arm and, and sort of carry it with you. Yeah, exactly. I think we looked at questions and what we were going to do, but one of the things um, I get asked a lot is, is what pressure do I need in the pot? And, and and in my experience, I see a lot of people putting a huge amount of pressure in the pot, and then there's a lot of product coming out, and then they're what I call choking it up on the gun, and then that that's then disrupting the the fan shape. So, what what do we what do we need to do to to set the gun up? Case, what are we what are we talking well, about? Well, it's actually not a really complicated process, but it takes some time in order to set it up correctly. First, we open up the pressure pot. And for today's purpose, we took water as it's uh, a bit safer. So Let's consider this it. consider this as paint then. Yep. And you fill the pot up with paint. And this is this is any sort of top coats and primers that would would go into this type of spray equipment, right? The, the normal yes. stuff that we would use. Yeah. But we do recommend to keep a separate pressure pots for top coating, separate for primers and all that stuff, just yep. to make sure you're always. Uh, safe because the, the paint chemistry is changing isn't it between the primers and the top coats so if you can and you can have the ability to keep separate equipment it just it's good practice i guess yes definitely good housekeeping so okay paint is in the pot as you can see this pot is coming with two gauges okay we have this gauge which is controlling the amount of air being pressurized into the pot to transport the paint to the gun Okay. And we have this gauge, and that one is controlling the amount of air which is sent to the gun for atomization. Okay. Pressure pots uh, also come with only one gauge, but then you can quite easily fit a manometer in between. And and that and sorry, the manometer, that's the one that we normally plug on the gun, right? At the other end. That's the that's the pressure. Yeah. We that's use this pressure. quite a lot with the, with the gravity guns, for example, as well, if it doesn't have a digital meter on it. Yeah, and I'm guessing the longer the longer your lines, you, the you get. We, we talk about um, pressure drop, those sort of things. So if you've got very long lines, you're probably better off having that that gauge up nearer the gun. But in this case, it looks like you've got sort of what a meter and a half, so you can you can run it as you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's okay. not much loss in between. Okay. Um, one thing I do like to point out on the lines, this line is air and this line is fluid. The air line is bigger in diameter than the fluid line is. And that is because okay. it's built of a different structure. 
Okay. This fluid line is completely solvent resistant to the paints that we are going to use in our business. And that's the thing you need to ensure. Make sure that the fluid line is capable of handling the solvents which are in your products. Okay. Now I've heard this before. So I think sometimes people miss that manufacturers, you know, yacht, we're quite a small industry in the whole world of paints, uh, but we use very similar technologies to aerospace, automotive, all, all those sort of things. But our, our paints, if I'm right in saying this, uh, are, are different in the respect that in automotive, they use a lot of water-based stuff, where in yacht, we use a lot of isocyanates and highly solvented products. So there okay. is the, there is the possibility that the yacht paints could, I guess the word I'm going to use, it's not technically brilliant, but is dissolve the the um, the lining and cause contamination of the paint. Is that is that what we're saying? Yeah, well, we see some uh, some lines uh, being used, which are used as airline, but also as fluid line. Okay. But quite often, those those airlines are constructed of an EPDM core. Well, you can all quite easily uh, Google it. EBDM and solvent resistibility. Okay. And then, then you see it as a quite limited solvent resistibility. Yeah. And that's not a. It's not that EPDM can't be used with other with other paints, but it's a water based paint type of line. Whereas what we're looking for is one that's solvent resistant, right? And exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now that's a good tip. Thanks, Case. Cool. Then I'm uh, going to get air. So here we got the normal air line, which is coming from the wall, and we hook that one up to the pressure pot. Then we have a meter here and we have the meter here. Okay. These work independently from each other. If I slowly wind up the pressure, the meter is going up and I'm almost getting one bar out of this now. Okay. I have one meter here, which should be adjustable as well. And this yep. is doing two, two bars now. Which is what you'd expect at, your, at the particular spray gun you've got now. You want two bars at the at the handle. So you've got two bar going to the gun. But if you had two bar two bar going in the pot, what I'm guessing it would be like a jet washer. You'd have got water in there at the moment, but that that fluid's going to come out like uh, crazy. Uh, I think we all uh, remember the, the the water guns back in the days called super soakers. Yeah. Okay. So let's wind it up to two bars. Two bars. So there's no air to the gun now, only water. Okay, I heard that. I'm quite easily spraying to the other side of the spray booth now. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you've got a 1.0 or a 2.0 tip in there. You can, you can, you can push too much paint out by overpressurizing the pot. Is that yeah. is that fair to say? That's okay, really fair to say. So how, how do we exactly how it works? So how do we know? How do we know? how much product we want. I, th I think um, that we've, yeah. we've got some guidance there, I think. Well, we have guidance in our all grip application guide. Uh, they are also being mentioned in uh, the technical data sheet of our products. We call them the fluid flow rates. Okay. I believe they're around 180 to 280, depending on the applicator, what's, what is safe to use. I guess the other thing in all of this, are our gauges calibrated correctly, uh, you know, all of those sort of things. So. I think you mentioned sort of 180 to 280, but just to, to help people understand, that's milliliters a minute, right? So if I pulled yeah, the yeah, sorry, yeah. It, into a super cup, I'd be looking at sort of say, let's hit somewhere in the middle, 200 mil a minute. So an easy way to measure that is if we divide by four, 15 seconds. So we, we're looking for 50 mil of product in 15 seconds as the delivery, right? Yeah, Which correct. is where you are now, that, that two bar. I'm guessing you're going to be having like three, four hundred mil and, and sags and runs all over the all over the surface. Do you want to demonstrate it? Well, you, please show us. I mean, it might help us show. The, the cup starts at 100 mils. <laughs> OK, so let me go to my my stopwatch. We're going to do 30 seconds and see how much we get. So three, two, one, go. So what we're doing for these 30 seconds is we're just going to see how much fluid's coming out. I mean, there's so much pressure there, Case. There's almost a water vapour coming off the top of that. Um, so again, it doesn't matter whether you've got a small tip or a large tip. We're going to get a huge amount of product coming out. We're coming up to sort of 20 seconds now. So I'm just going to count you down, Case. 
on where we are. So it's three, <laughs> two, one, stop. So that's 30 seconds. And, and you've got, what have you got there? We currently have 650. Okay. And we did 30 seconds. So we need to times that by two for fluid rate for minute. So that's like over a litre coming out of that pressure pot. Which so is basically what you're saying is even with a small tip, I'm over pressurizing it and I can put a, a heap load of paint on the surface. Exactly. Yep. So let's take it back a step. So if I want to set the gun up properly and I'm my my blue book says um, fluid flow rate 180 to 280. Um, the other thing that Case is doing here, we need to depressurize the pot, right? Once we've over pressurized it, because it's still got two bar in the pot. Um, so all those adjustments he's making on the gun won't make a huge difference until that volume of air is gone. So I think what he's going to do now is is probably come with a setting that he knows is somewhere near, and then we can look at the the flow rate. And while we're while we're talking here, um, while case this is, is a good one. Yeah, it looks good. While we're doing that, what we see is a lot of people adjust it, the gun, because they've got so much product coming out, they're reducing the fluid flow rate at the gun. But if I'm right in saying the guns are designed to work fully open, open. so what you're actually yep. doing is affecting the, the fan pattern, and in turn, that could affect your final finish, right? Correct. That's okay. Really correct. That's why we also always start with the, the needle fully open, and that yeah. should actually only be used for very, very, very small um setting differences so to say yeah and gravity has an effect if your pressure's too low and you lifted the gun up you could reduce flow as well i think yeah right correct. So, yeah yeah okay so just to refresh we, we understand how it works it's the amount of pressure going into the pot our fluid flow rate is basically when the trigger is fully open how much product's coming out and you're asking for say two, 280, uh, sorry, 180 to 280 is, is just a, an example in this video. Um, so then you just adjust the pressure to get somewhere near that reading. Yeah, yeah okay. correct. Can you show us that? Yeah, you do it all over again. And let me, for the ease of today, just take this cup and see if we can. What's your, what's your readings on the side of that one? We can probably, what does it start out on the reading on the side of that pot? On, on the sorry, on the super cup or the little cup that you're using, does it start at fifty mil or? Yeah, this one is starting at twenty five. Okay, so let's let's just for the benefit of this, let's do it for fifteen seconds. So whatever we get, we'd have to time by four. So are you happy that you're set somewhere near? I think this should be quite right. Okay, so I'm going to count you in on three. So three, two, one, go. So we're going to do this for fifteen seconds, guys, and then we'll times it by four. But that will ultimately give us our fluid flow rate. So, okay, so I'm going to count you down in seconds from, th so it's three, two, one, stop. One twenty. One twenty. So, okay, we're pretty high on that one. St still a lot. Good because it's, it's water. So let's, let, okay, so for the benefit of this, we're not quite right. You thought you were happy. That's great. I mean, I think for anyone, you're an experienced painter, right? So for anyone, it's it's a good sense check. So let's let's dial the gun back a little bit more in the pot. OK. So three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's going to be better. That's going to be closer, that one. But water is quite difficult to do. So let's go three, two, one, stop. It's probably about 100 there, uh, 75, don't know. 75, yep. 75 to 300. So we're, we're getting somewhere close to the, the 280 example that you gave. But I, I think that's a really good example of um, of what can happen. So what we've got here is we've got the same the same piece of equipment, the same fluid needle. But the more pressure you put in the pot, what we're saying is, is the more product's going to come out. Yep. But choking the gun up isn't necessarily the right way to adjust your fluid flow because you want that fan to be working fully open. Correct. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. Well, Adjusting I think... the needle is only for fine adjustments. That's it. But of course, now let, let's show that. So if you adjust the needle, um, if you wind the fluid needle in, 
uh, just just so we can see the fluid flow. You can pull the trigger and show you can show that you can adjust it, I guess. But in to be fair in that, um, that when we do adjust it, we are closing the fan and and altering the fan. So we've got nothing. Now, now I've closed it completely. Now I'm trying to open it up. OK, but you could get that fluid flow rate so we can we can see why people adjust it that way. But what you're saying is you're better off doing it at the pot because then the gun is working fully open. Correct. You don't drive a Ferrari to the shops at five miles an hour, right? It's, it's about speed. <laughs> so this okay. is brilliant. I think it's a great example. So more pressure means more product is what we're saying in this video. Um, the fluid flow rate is your milliliters per minute um, and as a guide, and then you can adjust it on the pot. And then a great tip there, you're saying run a secondary gauge so then you can adjust the pressure to the horns. Maybe you can you can show that now as well, just on the first trigger pull. OK, um, it's at two bars now. OK. OK. And, and I can also wind it in, of course, to see that nothing is happening then. Yeah. Now there's nothing anymore. So you've got no then atomization. Again, then it's only the fluid which is coming out. OK, that's brilliant. So key learnings of the day uh, for me. Thank you, Case. So, um, pressure in the pot, but we want to adjust the pressure in the pot rather than the fluid on the gun. The gun's exactly. designed to work fully open. And that that fluid flow rate, that guide that we give is exactly that. It's a it's the amount of product you would expect to come out in that given time. So we we say 180 to 280 for the example of this video per minute. Um, and that's what you're looking to get. But um, the other thing I think to protect your interest and everyone watching this, it's very difficult to demonstrate with water because of the viscosity. <laughs> but I think we got the general idea. So thank you. And the lines, of course. Huh? And the lines. Yeah, uh, as well. yeah, key one on the lines. Make sure they are solvent resistance and, and the right thing for the product. So exactly. I guess in with that in mind case, all it leaves me to do is to thank everyone for joining us and thank you. Um, if you want any further information, uh, there should be something popping up on the screen shortly. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and please do follow us on social media and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.